Our next guest came all the way from San Francisco to pay a visit here. He's a tremendously funny comedian. Please welcome the talented Mark Marin, everybody. Mark Marin. <laughs> Good to be back in New York again. I do live in San Francisco, but I used to live in this city. And I forgot just how brain numbing this city can be, and I realized it today when I, I came back and I was actually using a payphone on the street. As I'm standing there, two cop cars pull up onto the sidewalk, four cops get out, draw their guns to investigate the store right in front of me, and my only response was to go, oh, <laughs> Not like, they have guns, I'll call you back, but, ooh, might get loud in a second. <laughs> Hey, could you speak up? There's gunplay on this end. <laughs> I like being in New York, though. There's actually one of my favorite things to do here. There's a part, there's a part of New York downtown. It's sort of like a 24-hour, round-the-clock, homeless renaissance fair. Do you understand? <laughs> I can't wait till this whole city looks like a flea market. But no, there's this one part of town where they just sell things because there's a never-ending ecosystem of resellable garbage here, and they've got the market cornered. Now, I'm not knocking homeless people. I just usually don't need any, you know, BG's 8-tracks or real, real answering machines. But <laughs> something happened to me, though. I was walking through this neighborhood, and this guy comes up to me, and he's got no shoes on. He's wearing pants. It looks like he's been sleeping in for weeks. And he's holding the board game Sorry. <laughs> It was one of those moments where I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? And I just looked at him, I said, well, set him up, let's play. <laughs> I don't want to buy the game, but I'll spend some time with you, my friend. But San Francisco, there's sort of a different sort of freak scene there. There are a lot of freaks there, and they're proud to be freaks. I actually saw a guy in San Francisco like two weeks ago. He had pierced nipples and a team of sled dogs hooked up to him. Just like, whoosh, yes, call me Santa, who wants presents, you know? But I think to myself, you know, it's easy to judge people like that. You know, it's easy for you to go like, oh, look at that weirdo, queer thing I don't understand, bad. And I just think that's a wrong approach. I don't think you should judge people. If you see somebody's a freak and they're proud of being a freak, you should just go, hey, thanks for sharing. <laughs> I never thought of that possibility. Thank you. No, the dogs, that's great. <whistles> Come here. Hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> but piercing's okay. Does anyone have a pierce? I actually, I mean, I saw, I think it's okay if it's subtle, but I saw a girl in the village today. She had like 10 earrings in one ear, 10 in the other. She actually had three rings in her nose. She actually had one of those wooden lip plates in her mouth. And I'm looking at her, I'm thinking to myself, well, gee, how pissed off are your parents do you have to be <laughs> to show up at Thanksgiving dinner with a wooden lip plate in your mouth? I mean, what's your mother gonna say? Like, how are things going in New York, honey? Well, I'm having a hard time getting a job. <laughs> But I think it's sort of a ritual, and I think we lack rituals. I think, apparently, I read a poll recently, a lot less people believe in God now. And I think that's weird, you know? But I think one of the reasons is, God doesn't seem to talk to people like he used to. I mean, you read the Bible every other day, it was like, Abraham, this is God. I need you to do something for me. And people would do it. I mean, who's he talking to now? And then I thought to myself, well, maybe it's those guys you see walking down the street talking to themselves. <laughs> You know those guys that are like, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. Maybe the other side of that conversation is God going, you're the new leader. No, I can't. I can't. I have to collect cans and quarters. I have an agenda here. I think I can do another bit here. I, um... I recently read in a tabloid that some people, apparently one tabloid said Elvis is dead and another tabloid said he wasn't. And I think that we should end the mystery. Dig the fat boy up. <laughs> Someone ought to dig him up, stick his skull on the end of a stick, and lead his followers home to Graceland, where they can all drink the holy water out of the toilet he crapped out on. Now, and I guarantee you that'll be the longest line of white trash you'll ever see in your life. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, wait. I'm sorry to offend any, a woman came up to me after a show once and said, did you know that white trash is a racist comment? And I said, look, lady, I would never say anything slang or derogatory about blacks, Jews, gays, Hispanics, but white trash? I mean, who's gonna stand up and go, excuse me? I'm white trash. And you've offended me, mister. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Fat boy up. A new, a new anthem.
My thanks to Mark Marin. Make sure to catch Mark at uh, the Punchline in Walnut Creek, uh, California, December 1st to the 4th, and at Cobbs in San Francisco, December 7th to the 11th. And of course, thanks to David Gale from 90210. He was here. And thanks to Mike Wilson, our illustrated man.